going to go over how to diagnose and check for parasitic drain or a wake up issue on a BMW E46, although this can be applied to really any vehicle. You can do this using an amp clamp or in my case I'm actually going to use a voltmeter that has a min-max button right here and that's going to help me monitor for the sleep and uh, wake-ups and if there's a parasitic draw. Now this type of situation would be if you're, you park your car inside and you come out and your battery is drained, you test your battery or you charge it, your battery is good, or you put a new battery in and you come out the next day and you find out that your battery is drained again. That means something is actually draining energy from the vehicle electrical system from the battery while the vehicle should be at rest. A typical reading for parasitic draw on an E46 at least is about 0 0.05 amps or 50 milliamps. Now it is important to charge your battery before you start this test. I have charged my battery up to 100% and the next step is to hook up your voltmeter in series with the negative cable. All right, and I'm gonna just go over how to do that. So this is basically how I have it set up. So I have my positive lead going to my negative cable at the very top where there's the 10 millimeter that takes off the negative to ground. This symbol means ground right here. So this is the chassis ground for the battery right here. Okay, so it's going through my amp meter. I leave it connected here and then I connect the other end to a good ground on the body. So in this case I've connected right here to a bolt. Alright, so that's going to be my good ground. Alright, you see right here I'm connected to my negative cable and I do have a, um, a wrap harness which you can purchase 10 foot retractable test lead at any hardware store or parts supply store and then I have that wired into my voltmeter. Now it's showing zero amps. There's a reason for that. It's because the ground is still connected. So it takes the path of least resistance and it's not going through my meter which is, has higher resistance than this ground. So I actually have to disconnect the ground right here which will then feed it through my voltmeter and I'm going to want to be in uh, milliamp setting. So make sure you're on the milliamp setting. Also make sure your voltmeter you have your ground and then you're in your your amp setting. This is milliamps and amps. And you have to be careful here because if you hook this up wrong you will pop the internal fuse. These are fused and if there's too much amperage it will pop this fuse and you will need to replace the fuse before you can continue. Now another reason to set it up before you disconnect the negative cable is so that you don't actually interrupt the uh, the circuit in the vehicle because sometimes disconnecting a negative cable can have the problem go away. You're actually resetting whatever is causing the problem. While that could be a good thing for a short term, for long term the problem usually comes back. So with this set up in this way I'm going to then take my 13 millimeter and I'm going to loosen my ground here and I'm going to separate that so that it's now going through my meter. So now my meter is reading 0 .044. So that's actually a good reading. That's you know 44 milliamps. Now on my paper here I have an example of what you'd see if you actually saw a bad reading. It would be like 0 .15 or it could even say 2.15. That would be 2.15 amps. Now I'm going to go ahead and open the door because I know that this won't pull more amps than what this uh, fluke meter can handle and we're going to come back and check to see what this reading is. Alright, so with the door open I'm drawing 1.972 amps. You can see this is an auto range so it's telling me I have amps up here and it's uh, 1.91. Alright, I have it set on min-max which I'm actually going to shut off for now. 
All right, see so it actually it's already dropped to 800 milliamps. And as the vehicle goes to sleep, this should drop down to 0 0.05. I mean, if you saw point 0 0.06, point 0 0.08, you'd be okay. If you see point 0.1, point 0.120, 150, that's a bit of a drain. That could actually drain your battery over time. Now, that's a parasitic draw. So if you check it and you see this all the time, you have a current draw which then you could go to the fuses and I mean you could technically pull one fuse at a time check your meter um, and see if your your draw disappears if it does you would know it was on that fuse and then you could look up that fuse in a wiring diagram and then trace it to specific modules now wake up problem is a little bit different and more difficult to find so there it goes 0 0.082 so that's 82 milliamps down to 51 milliamps. So this looks great, right? So I think, yeah, I'm good, no problem. Well, what's happening on this particular car is intermittently it wakes back up and draws half an amp. That'd be 0 0.500. Half an amp over course of a night, I mean, it could drain, depending on how the strength of your battery, 25% to half your battery, depending on the state of charge of your battery. So half an amp waking up going to sleep waking up going to sleep you'll end up with a dead battery again the difficult here is you can only find the problem when the vehicle actually wakes up so you have to watch your meter and you can monitor it to see if you fixed it by using the min max so if i press and hold the min max actually that turns it off i press it once it actually is going to register my minimum and my maximum reading. So I could walk away, come back in a half hour, and see what's happening with the car to verify if my problem is fixed with removing a fuse or if my problem is still there. And for this particular vehicle, that's what I have to do. And also, as a quick side note, make sure to disconnect the charger from the system because sometimes that can give you a false reading where if the car goes to sleep properly and you're not going to see the amperage spike or the draw because uh, you're feeding a voltage externally through a charger. So I have that disconnected and now I have to monitor it to uh, see if this spikes up, which I know it's been waking up and going to 500 milliamps. So I got to catch it and then try to figure out which fuse is causing it. Now it's, it is common for it to be a radio. This has an aftermarket radio in this car, but when I've already pulled the fuses for the radio and uh, the 500 milliamps is still there, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to find. My next guess is that this could be a telephone control unit, which I believe is up there. Um, see my finger up in that box area there. I'm going to go see if I can pull that fuse and then monitor this again and see what's happening. I'll keep you updated. All right, so I've had it on min max. Uh, it's reading 0 0.043, but if I scroll through, I can see my minimum and my maximum and there's my max it drew 0.191 or 191 milliamps so there's definitely something waking this up I have the fuses out for the radio still so I should put those back in because I don't think those are the main cause um, my next guess is that it's the TCU which is another common component on the E46 to cause a parasitic draw well this one really gave me a run for my money I pulled out the aftermarket radio and of course I had a big spaghetti of wires and uh, GPS sensors and uh, there's USB, there's a lot of connections here, uh, antenna, uh, microphone and I, there's also a bus communication translator. I plugged all that and the wake up was still there. So I pulled the IHKA, the heater control panel out wake up still there. Disconnected the TCU, the wake up still there. And I noticed that it happens every 10 minutes I get a 200 milliamp wake up. So I went to the fuses, um, not able to find any with what's called an amp pound. This uh, measures voltage drop across the fuses. If you go like from end to end, you can measure if you have a current uh, amperage draw and it will tell you in milliamps what your draw is across the fuse but since the wake up only comes and goes every 10 minutes and it's only there for a few seconds you can't really catch it 
So I decided to pull out chunks of fuses, which I know sometimes resets things, but in this case, it always came back. So I actually just started here, and I took out a chunk here, all the way up to this fuse right here. And I found out that uh, fuse number, let me see what it is, 43 which is this 5 amp right here when it was out my wake up went away so that feeds my OBD2 and my instrument cluster so I went ahead and removed the instrument cluster and I've been monitoring it and my wake up is now gone so the next question is I'm going to reassemble everything except for the instrument cluster including the aftermarket radio and uh, see if I have an additional draw additional wake up or if the instrument cluster is actually causing everything else to wake up and that's why I go from a 600 milliamp draw to the to the 200 milliamp draw when I disconnect the radio because the instrument cluster could be waking up the bus users on the uh, the K bus on this car K or I bus so let me throw this together and I'll let you know what happens so I did solve it. This is the final reading, 0 0.048 or 50 milliamps, which is perfect for this E46. It was the instrument cluster. I even pulled the pin out for the K bus just to see if anything else was waking up the instrument cluster. And the instrument cluster went still plugged in with the K bus wire out. I'll show you real quick. Here's the connector for the instrument cluster. And I have the K bus wire right there disconnected. And with that disconnected, the instrument cluster still wakes up and draws 0.2 amps. And then when it wakes up, it wakes up the radio and other components, which brings my wake up all the way up to um, 6 to 800 milliamps, which drains the battery down. So the fix is going to be to replace the instrument cluster on this vehicle. And hopefully this process will help you find and solve your own parasitic draw or wake up issue. Thanks for watching and positive comments and likes are appreciated.